On Monday, the EU's top foreign policy official accused Israel of using hunger as a weapon of war against Palestinians in Gaza. It was one of the strongest condemnations yet by a Western leader of Israel's brutal siege of Gaza. But while some European leaders have slowly begun to voice serious concerns over what's going on in the Strip, the US has been particularly slow to sound the alarm. That's despite nearly six months of mounting evidence of war crimes being committed against the Palestinians. But something seems to be finally shifting. Speaking in the Philippines, Secretary of State Antony Blinken said this. 100% of the population in Gaza is at severe levels of acute food insecurity. That's the first time an entire population has been so classified. Um, We also see, again, uh, according to, in this case, the United Nations, 100%, the totality of the population, is in need of humanitarian assistance. Compare that to uh, Sudan, about 80% of the population there is in need of humanitarian assistance. Afghanistan, about 70%. So again, this only underscores uh, both the, uh, the urgency, the imperative of making this the priority. Of course, Blinken doesn't explicitly mention Israel there, but his stark description of the impending famine in Gaza marks a subtle shift in emphasis. And the space slowly opening up between European and American positions was made even clearer when Ireland's Taoiseach Leo Varadkar attended St. Patrick's Day celebrations at the White House alongside President Joe Biden. As we know, Joe Biden has a very close affinity with Ireland. He frequently mentions his own Irish heritage. And as a senator, he helped push Bill Clinton into providing resources for negotiations that led to the Good Friday Agreement. Varadka took the opportunity to draw a connection between Biden's love of Ireland and the brutal situation in Gaza. He began with this reminder. This week, meeting so many proud Irish Americans, I've been thinking a lot about sacred promises. And I've been thinking in particular of the words of one courageous Irish American, a lawyer and a decorated war hero, who spoke so eloquently about the sacred promises that we make as leaders. To quote his words, it's about the promises we make to our children who deserve a chance to succeed, the promises we make to each other, the sacred promise to work for a better future for all. Those were the words of Beau Biden. Bo Biden was Joe Biden's son who died of brain cancer in 2015. The president was visibly moved by him being mentioned. Varadkar then went on to say this. Mr. President, as you know, the Irish people are deeply troubled about the catastrophe that's unfolding before our eyes in Gaza. And when I travel the world, leaders often ask me why the Irish have such empathy for the Palestinian people. And the answer is simple. We see our history in their eyes, a story of displacement, of dispossession, a national identity questioned and denied, forced emigration, discrimination, and now hunger. So we support your work and that of your administration to secure a humanitarian ceasefire and to create the space for lasting peace. The people of Gaza desperately need food, medicine, and shelter. And most especially, they need the bombs to stop. Now, I read that as a swipe at Biden, actually, because he's talking there about the things they need, aid, shelter, and so on. They need, more than anything else, the bombs to stop. Now, of course, the United States is giving a huge aid package to Israel, about $19 billion, presently going through the house, precisely so they can continue this war on Gaza, this war on, effectively, children. Average age in the Gaza Strip is 18. I think half I think half the population in Gaza is, is younger than 18, rather. A very young average age. And he's saying, really, that the most important thing is to stop the violence. Now, of course, that's not something that Biden has done. He's actually stopped short of saying that. Mike, what's your read here? They were very conciliatory and, I thought, fine words from Leo Varadkar. Very clever politics, to also mention uh, Joe Biden's son. And also very clever to draw attention to the similarities, really, um, between the the dispossession, the displacement of the Irish people, particularly in the mid-19th century and, of course, after the Great Famine, and what's going on in Gaza. I mean, that should be the kind of 
the kind of story, the kind of narrative that doesn't just pull on the heartstrings of Joe Biden, but actually Irish Americans right across the United States. Absolutely. I think it's a really, really powerful contribution and a really powerful way in which he delivered it. I think the reason why it's so powerful, there are two things, right? He draws the parallels between Ireland and the Palestinian people and, and, and the suffering, you know, both groups have experienced because of displacements and a really, really powerful in that, drawing that parallel. But then crucially, he evokes Joe Biden's son. I mean, Joe Biden, when it comes to his son, this understandably gets very, very emotional when his, whenever his son is mentioned and was evoked. Um, and I think that's really, really powerful because it's in many ways, you know, what people are asking for when it comes to, to Gaza isn't particularly radical. You know, we're calling for an end to suffering. We're calling for a ceasefire. And I've, when it comes to a ceasefire, for me, a ceasefire is just for start. You know, thinking about things like boycotts and, and other things that are much bigger, much bigger demands. The ceasefire is just the start of our demands. So I think it is really, really important, you know, that we see a ceasefire as something that's very, very important. And I think people are beginning to get to that point. People are beginning to realise that, hey, listen, we need to stop this. This is not okay. I mean, it's taking people long enough, but people have got there. And I think hopefully as as that kind of becomes the consensus, we can then move to kind of more radical demands and, and, and demands that actually do really, you know, shake things and, 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 you know, make people feel very, very uncomfortable because that's what's needed in this situation. So I thought it was a really compelling bit of politics. And I think it's really important that we are having leaders now. I've spoken a lot since I've been on Navarra. This kind of liberal consensus, which does still, it is still a thing. And there is still this liberal consensus of, well, you know, Israel has the right to defend itself. That is still a thing. And some people are still saying that. But it's good that we're having some really, really powerful, compelling stories and powerful, compelling voices like Veradka there and the way in which she told that story was fantastic. I think it's important we have more and more of those voices, especially speaking to people like Biden and to, and to the US, because they have a really important role to play in this. And they, and, and they in many ways, can, can really, really change and shift things, right? So it's important we continue to say these things because it is important and a ceasefire is just the start of the changes we need to see. Yeah, and quickly going back to um, Anthony Blinken's comments at the top there, you know, he's saying that um, the entirety of Gaza is facing famine, effectively. He didn't use that word, but um, you know, food, you know, sh- food deprivation is the sort of technical term, isn't it? Um, and you've got this strange situation now where there are some people, Zionists, pro-Israel sort of voices, who say that there's nobody facing famine in Gaza, nobody's going without food, this is complete nonsense, it's fake news coming from the left. So let's let's go through the people saying this is the case. The EU, I think Joseph Burrell, I think last week, said that uh, you had significant numbers of people facing famine. You've had UN agencies say it. You've had Christian aid say it. And now you've got Secretary of State Anthony Blinken saying it. But apparently this is a left-wing talking point. Uh, at, a certain, at a certain stage, you would hope that the people saying that kind of stuff are, are grasped what they are, which is fanatics who will in no way um, amend what they think on the basis of evidence. 